Hey guys, I hope you all are doing good. This is Dr. Simran and you are watching Dentistry. Here at Dentistry, I make videos on dentistry and dental related topics. If you find these videos useful, please do consider subscribing and click the bell icon so that you get updates whenever I post a new video. So today we will be discussing about the anatomical landmarks in the mandible. So stay tuned. So let's start off with the limiting structures in the mandible. Similar to the maxilla, we have here the labial frenum, this elevation here. Then we have the groove that is the labial sulcus or the labial vestibule. Then we have the buccal frenum, these elevations again. Then the buccal vestibule again. Now in the mandible, we have also the lingual frenum. This is the lingual frenum that attaches to the tongue and the alveololingual sulcus. We divide the alveolus lingual sulcus into three parts, the anterior, the middle and the posterior one. And then we have the retromolar pad area. These are the retromolar pads and the pterygomandibular raphe. So these are our limiting structures in the mandible. So now let's see them one by one. So the labial frenum is a fibrous band similar to that in the maxilla except that like in the maxilla it is not passive and has muscle attachments. So the muscles incisivus and orbicularis oris influence this frenum. So it is an active frenum. Then the labial vestibule. This is our labial vestibule is also influenced by the orbicularis oris incisivus and depressor labiae inferioris muscles because of which when the mouth is wide open this sulcus becomes very narrow and therefore the impression of this area will also be very narrow okay so now let's see the buccal frenum these are buccal frenum this overlies the depressor anguli oris and also the fibers of buccinators are attached to this frenum. So this should be relieved to prevent the displacement of the denture during the function. Then we have the buccal vestibule. This is our buccal vestibule that extends from the buccal frenum till the retromolar region. Now this vestibule is bounded by the residual ridge on one side and the buccinator on the other side. And this space is also influenced by the action of the masseter muscle. So when the masseter contracts, so when the masseter muscle contracts, it pushes the buccinator inwards and producing the bulge into the mouth and it is reproduced as a notch on the denture flange. So the bulge in the mouth is reproduced as the notch on the denture flange and this notch is called as the mesetric notch. Okay. Now let's see the lingual frenum. So this is our lingual frenum. So the height and the width of this frenum varies considerably. If the lingual frenum is attached too high that is on the tongue, it is called the tongue tie. And it should be corrected as it may affect the stability of the denture. So now let's see the alveololingual sulcus that extends from the lingual frenum to the mylohyoid curtain. As discussed earlier, it is considered in three regions, the anterior, the middle and the posterior regions. So the anterior region extends from the lingual frenum till the premylohyoid fossa. The middle region extends from the premylohyoid fossa till the distal end of the mylohyoid ridge. So this region is shallower than the other regions due to the prominence of the mylohyoid ridge and also because of the action of the mylohyoid muscle. The lingual flange of the denture over this area should be made such that it slopes medially towards the tongue. So it is made such that it slopes medially towards the tongue. Right. So this will help the denture to be more stable as the tongue will rest over this flange area and it will also provide the space for raising the floor of the mouth without displacing the denture and the peripheral seal will also be maintained. Now the posterior region of the alveolar lingual sulcus, the flange of our denture should turn laterally towards the ramus of the mandible to fill up the fossa and complete the typical S form of the lingual flange and cover the denture. This is important to record this S shape of the denture and it is formed because of the influence of various intrinsic and extrinsic muscles during the impression making and thus the patient is asked to perform various tongue movements during the impression making. And this posterior part is called the lateral throat form. 
Now the retromolar pad area. It is an important structure that forms the posterior seal of the mandibular denture. It is present behind the pear shaped pad which is distal to the tooth. So it is present behind this pear shaped pad. Now the retromolar pad is a collection of loose areolar tissues with an aggregate of mucosal glands. The denture should cover only two third of the retromolar pad area. Now let us see the boundaries of the retromolar pad area. It is bounded posteriorly by the temporalis muscle, laterally by the buccinator muscle, medially by the pterygomandibular raphae and the superior constrictor. And these muscles limit the extent of the denture and prevent the placement of extra pressure during the impression making. So the denture should only extend till two third of this pad area as described earlier. So now let's see the supporting structures. So first of all we have the buccal shelf area. So the buccal shelf area is the area between the buccal frenum and the anterior border of the masseter. This area does not resorb easily as the occlusal forces are directed perpendicular to this area. So the occlusal forces are directed perpendicular to this area. So it does not resorb that easily as we have also discussed in the maxillary landmarks. So this area is bounded by medially by the crest of the ridge, distally by the retromolar pad and laterally by the external oblique ridge. Now the residual alveolar. This is the residual alveolar ridge. Now in the edentulous mandible, the ridge becomes flat and due to the resorption of the mandible, the ridge inclines outwards and it becomes progressively wider. So the crest of the alveolar ridge is a relief area. Okay, so although the residual alveolar ridge, we consider it as a supporting area, but the crest of the alveolar ridge is a relief area. Now the relief areas. So the crest of the alveolar ridge is a relief area. Then the mylohyoid ridge that runs along the lingual surfaces of the mandible, the mucosa over this area is thin and may get traumatized and should be relieved. And the area under this is an undercut. So the mylohyoid ridge area should be relieved. Now the next is the mental foramen. It lies over the mandibular first and the second premolar region. But due to the ridge resorption, it may lie close to the ridge. Okay. And this area should be relieved because in cases of the pressure over this area, the nerves may produce paresthesia. The next relief area is the genial tubercle. These are a pair of the bony tubercles anteriorly on the lingual side of the body of the mandible. Due to the resorption, it becomes increasingly prominent and should be relieved. And similarly, as we discussed in the maxilla, there were a palatine torus and so there can also be uh, mandibular torus. So these are called as torus mandibularis and these are again the abnormal bony prominences and should be relieved. So now let's summarize the mandibular landmarks. So first of all we have the labial frenum, labial vestibule, the buccal frenum, the buccal vestibule, then the retromolar pad and the pterygomandibular raphae. Then we have the lingual frenum and the alveolar lingual sulcus. Okay. Then the stress bearing areas or the supporting structures, these are the buccal shelf area and the residual alveolar ridge. But the crest of the residual alveolar ridge is a relief area. Now the relief areas are the crest of the alveolar ridge, the genial tubercles, the mylohyoid ridge and the mental foramen and torus mandibularis if it is present. So that is all about the anatomical landmarks in the mandible. You can check the other video on the anatomical landmarks in the maxilla on my channel. I hope you like this video and if you do, please show some love by giving it a big thumbs up and also share it with your friends to make their life easier as well. And do not forget to subscribe to the channel for more such content. Also, any kind of feedback is highly appreciated. And if you have any queries or questions, you can ask me on my Instagram handle, the link for which is there in the description down below. So, see you until next time. Thank you.